In this video, we're going to focus on how we can disable a button. For example, if I click on number two, you'll see the other two are disabled. And if I refresh and click on number three, then the others are disabled that we haven't clicked on. Of course, with the exception of the send button. So let's start to look how to do this. So let's start to look how we can disable a button in JavaScript. So the first thing that we need to do here is, of course, to get our basic template here, just HTML, CSS, and JavaScript here. And then we have a blank sheet here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add up here three specific buttons here. I'm going to say here, button tag. And we can give this also in class. We can say here, class button or BTN. And then the ID will be equal to BTN1. And I'm going to say here, click number one. If I save that, refresh, we have here a button. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add up two more buttons here. And what I want to do eventually is when we click on any of these buttons, we should disable all other options here. So let's start to look at how we can do that in JavaScript. So if I save this, we have three options here. By default, to disable a button, we can just put in here, disabled. And if I do this, and refresh, you will see here now, this is grayed out and I can click on it. Well, I am able to click on button number two and three. But of course, I want to make sure that when we click, everything else will be disabled by default. Well, button number one stays intact. So to do this, we're going to work with a function and this function will be triggered here with the on click functionality. So I'm going to say on click. And it, what this basically does is that when we click on this button, we want to have a function working. So what I'm going to say here, we can say here, this will be our, I guess, disable, uh, disable button. That's called that specific function here. So if I copy this here right now and create a function, just say function, then button disable. And then in here, we can, for example, say console log. And we're going to put in here a string value of hello. If I save that, refresh, open up here my developer tab and click on button one. It shows here hello, but if I click on button two and three, it doesn't work. So what I do want to do is make sure that we have for every button, the same functionality connected. For that, we can copy this all together and just create another on click and this on click will trigger the same button. Of course, now becomes the question, how am I able to figure out if I click on this, which button I have clicked? For that, we have something very useful in JavaScript, which is called the this variable. The this variable refers to the button that you're clicking. So if you click this button, the values will be eventually here shown, or we will be able to retrieve the specific button that was clicked. So if I do this now and put that in here and there, we have now here what we call a, um, if I'm not mistaken, an argument. So that argument here will become a parameter. So whatever the value is and the parameter in this case, we can give it anything, but it must be descriptive. So in this case, I'll call it our um, button clicked. So we have it nicely and it's easy to, to understand what we have. And if I put in this here and I'll save, refresh, we should be able to see the details, what it shows. So let me just open up this and zoom in a bit more. There we are. So you can see here, when I click on button one, we understand now that this is button one. We can see class, we can see the ID name, which is button number one. And you can see here the functionality in here. So this is very useful for us because now we know what we clicked. So based on this, we can now figure out how to disable the other options. Of course, to do that, I will need another functionality to understand how many buttons we have right now. And what I will do is because I give it a class, we also know which exact button you want to uh, disable. And what, what I mean, like the which category, everything with this class. So it, we could have another button that says like send, but that send button maybe should not have a disable functionality. So that's why we have this class here. You could add up other classes. 
if you want to avoid disabling it so this could be maybe button sent and that will be then not uh, pinpointed however I will show you later on to understand that so what you could do maybe here just for the sake of it I'll just make this here so I'll say this will be sent and this is here sent and this of course here will be sent and I will just remove the functionality of the unclick here all right so if I click on this nothing happens but this is also a different type of button that is not being categorized as the same class so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to use here uh, the option to get all the buttons with the same condition here so we're going to say here constant or let's give it a constant and we're going to say here all btn or all buttons basically and then we're going to use here the functionality document dot and the document here refers to this html document that we're on so once we're on this html document search here so we're going to say a query and query means search for the selector and the selector are basically all of these items here all the tags selector all meaning i don't want to find a single selector or single a single tag i want to find every one of them with a matching condition which will be a string value is a dot dot means the class btn so basically give me every selector or tag that has the class name of btn in there so once we do this and then if i do a console log to show you what this btn is showing if i save that refresh now i click on one you can see here it shows me i'm clicking on button number two but we also get a note list and a note list is a list of every button that we have in our html document so it finds three items here and not four because it is not considered a button it's the same class category so now i have this and what i want to do now is to make sure we disable them so how do we disable or how do we figure out first of all what we clicked on which we do have here and then making sure that the one we clicked is not disabled while everything else is so let's start to work on that so for this because we are having here what we call an array and this is not really an array it's a note list because it covers a lot more information than a standard array in javascript basically all the details a button could have but the structure is very similar so what i want to do is i want to look through these items here so first of all let me just show you how i would be able to grab one of these items in our all button uh, constant so what we could say here very similar to an array the structure and the logic is quite similar so we can say here number one let's do that refresh then press any of these buttons and we always get button number two shown because that's index number one in the all button variable or constant so what i want to do now is just grab this and then we're going to say here dot for each i'm going to use a for each loop here this for each loop is designed to loop through every one of them basically we're going to every one of these buttons and then we can start to check certain conditions or check anything that we want to do so what i'm going to say here for each and then we're going to use here shorthand and for this i can say here just maybe the button info which is basically just the same all or of the index of these buttons and then we say comma index and this we, we put, make sure we have here a function error expression because it's a callback functionality and then what i want to do is i want to grab one of these and just do a console log and you'll see it will loop through every one of them nicely if i click on this you can see here we have first a note list and then loops through these items exactly the same as we started here so that is all correct so if we do the index you will see it will give a matching index number here zero one two there we are so what we could do here is basically get the specific info that i click so if i click on this number one i would like to get the id here so to do that to just to get the id basically here we could just say a dot id to get it but here it's exactly the same logic so if i save that refresh so if i click on this you can see here i click on button one and then it will loop through all these ids if i do button number two it will be button two here and then all of the same ids in there so what we now can do is start to compare 
And basically it's a very simple if statement. We're going to iterate through all of these, or basically loop through all of these button IDs. And then we're going to check if the button ID here would be equal to that. Or basically, if it's not equal, disable the button. But if it is equal, don't do anything. That's basically what we're going to do here. So for this logic, I'm going to create a simple if statement. I'm going to say if the button clicked is not equal to the button ID in this for each loop, in that case, I want to say the button must be disabled. To do that, I'm going to say here button click, oh sorry, not button click, but the button info, because we're looping through these items here. I say it dot disabled equals true. Semicolon here, save, then refresh, and now if I click on one, you can see the other two are disabled. If I click on number two, number one, and number three, are disabled and if I click on number three it is all disabled except for of course the send because this one is independent of this uh, uh, of these classes here and that's basically how we can play around with disabling a button in JavaScript.